Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports, joined today as always by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On this episode, we have NWSL 2022 team-by-team previews that we are still rolling out, and we are going to take a deep dive into San Diego Wave FC. There's your first water pun. A quick reminder (laughs) before we get into everything for everyone following us, follow us on Twitter for all breaking news. At Attacking Third, if you're listening to this as a podcast, please give us a five-star rating and review. It takes just a second, and it really helps us out. So you can do that on Apple Podcasts, the five-star rating and review page, and on Spotify's Attacking Third page. Go ahead and give us five stars if you like what you hear. Lisa, the previews keep happening. We're here together talking about it now. We're going to be talking about San Diego Wave. How are you doing today? I am, I'm good because this is it. Second to last preview. We We've done... 10 previews for every single squad done really in depth looks at their rosters, at their coaching staff, at everything they've brought on. Um, We already did Angel City FC, the first expansion side, and now we get to do San Diego, the other expansion side, which is a different approach because we don't know what this team really looks like with the the pieces that they have together. Um, We have a pretty cool logo for San Diego. I I like what they've got there with the different colors and the wave. Um, But I'm excited to talk about this team. I'm excited for games to start. I mean, can Challenge Cup just start already? I want to see what these teams can bring. But I'm I'm good on this, this Tuesday that we're recording. Sandra, how are you? I'm doing good too. You know, it's a it's a different little bit of, of energy that we got as you sort of usher away, you know, one month and sort of come into another. And uh, you know, it's just I, I I've had so much fun talking about these these team previews. I'm glad it's something that we challenged ourselves with, you know, instead of just like, oh, let's just do like one big encompassing. I love uh being able to look at each team side by side, mm-hmm. look at their their you know, their prior season. And in, in this case for San Diego, we're going to have to take a look at really kind of their off season, right? Because uh, there's not a ton there that we can go off and say like, Oh, this is where they finished in 2021. But um, let's, uh, let, let's start, right? Let's take a look at San Diego wave FC and a little bit of a team overview for the NWSL's newest expansion side. They, uh, they made waves. There's another one for you all, right? Uh, they, they made their introduction to, to the league, uh, adjacent to Angel City, right? So two California teams entering the fold of NWSL, going from 10 teams to 12 teams. Uh, they went ahead and they announced a club president in Jill Ellis. That was a very, very big announcement. And then Jill Ellis, in her position, went ahead and started assembling, uh, you know, some pieces to really the first pieces to start putting together this this team and what it could look like in the future. Uh, They went ahead and named head coach Casey Stoney uh, in July of 2021, formerly the head coach of Manchester United 2018, really helped uh, kind of turning that franchise around overseas there. Other notable hires, Molly Downton, right, general manage, manager for, for the team, uh, bringing on Richard Gunny, the assistant coach, a Welsh coach, assistant in Portland to the Thorns with Mark Parsons for five seasons. So a lot of pieces there, right, mm-hmm. in the sort of the, admi- the admin side of things for this team before they really started to put together pieces for their player talent. And in terms of their finish in 2021, that's not available at the moment. <laughs> We're too busy, uh, you know, putting all the pieces together. But because of the things that they were starting to put in motion, the things that were starting to go in place for this team, when we did our attacking third way too early power rankings episode back in December of 2021, we placed San Diego Wave FC in 10th place out of 12 teams. And at the time, we didn't have a lot of information other than the limited things that were in front of us. Didn't really have uh, too much insight into how this team was going to look, the personnel that they were going to bring on, on the player talent side of things. So that is where we placed them at the time. But we've got an offseason now to take a look at for this club. And when we're thinking about breakout roster signings, when we've been doing this for the other previews, we've heard about different player acquisitions or we've talked about like, uh, you know, oh, this this was a player that was re-signed or a player who was issued a contract extension. But what I'm going to do here for San Diego Wave FC is because basically all of them can, I think you can make an argument for breakout roster signings because mm-hmm. it was players joining the team for the first time. So Lisa, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rattle these off and I'm going to hit you with a question. Are you ready? I am ready. 
Hit me. All right. So in terms of breakout roster signings, player acquisitions, of which there were many, Abby Dahlkemper, defender, the first signing for San Diego Wave. They they made a move for Alex Morgan. Mana Shim uh, included in this roster as a non-roster invitee. Sophia Jakobsen via uh, Bayern Munich. Swedish international, Kaylin Sheridan. Tegan McGrady, Jody Taylor, a triple uh, trade with Chicago Red Stars, Katie Johnson, Mackenzie, Donia, Kelsey uh, Turnbull coming via Chicago, uh, acquiring Carly Telford off a transfer from Chelsea FC. Uh, and there's some things that are pending there on her international transfer certificate and, and P1 visa, the expansion draft that came into play, ultimately selecting Kristen McNabb, Kaylee Real, and then the draft itself, right? Going with the, the, the number one overall pick in Naomi Girma, Marlene Shimmer, Sydney Pulver, Belbrick, Caleb Bruce, a ton of players that they started to add, right? As the offseason window came into play. When you're looking at just some of these, Lisa, what are some of the players that are that ring out to you that you can point at and say, you know what, that can be considered the breakout roster signing for this team? I mean, uh, all of them, right? In, in some sense, you can really see, I think, the personal touches from head coach Casey Stoney, uh, President Jill Ellis. I think you can really see where their personal touches and personal interests in this roster come in um, it, based on who they've signed. I, I think that making uh, the first move with Abby Dahlkamper and that first signing was really telling of what kind of team San Diego is going to be. And we actually, Sandra, you and I had the pleasure of speaking with head coach Casey Stoney uh, a bit back, way back when all of this was a first initially announced. And that was something she said that she wants to be a defensive team, a team that is really tough to break down, a team that um, it has the ball on defense and then immediately starts their attack. But it all starts with defense and it's team defending from the forwards to their back. So I think signing Abby Dahlkamper as the very first signing is pretty big. Um, I, I also really like their gets of Kaylin Sheridan, right? Gotham goalkeeper, Canadian international gold medal last summer in Tokyo. Um, so looking at it defensively, those are some big signings for sure. I, and Carly Telford, a transfer out, out of Chelsea, the goalkeeper as well. Um, I, I like this. Even Tegan McGrady from Washington Spirit, the Nash, or the NWSL champions from 2021. I think the the defense that Casey Stoney acquired um, is really telling of, of kind of what system she's going to set up in the back and how she is putting her money where her mouth is. And she said she wants to be a defensive team. So she went out and found some of the top defensive players in the world to, to come to her squad. So that's really what stands out to me when I look at all of these signings and even glancing down the roster. Um, what about you? Were any of these signings surprising, maybe surprising that they left their uh, initial thing, initial team that they were with or the fact that they did come to San Diego? It, does anything stand out to you on that front? You know what? I, I liked uh, the signing of, Sophia Jakobsen, right, uh, via Bayern, via you know, the Swedish international coming over to the, to the States and going to be playing with an expansion side, right? And the concept of having this sort of veteran international player uh, coming on board overseas to not only the NWSL, but to a club that is really just getting things started really stood out for me a lot. It also really sort of signaled, you know, what somebody like a, a Casey Stoney, like who she is and what she is bringing right to uh, this team, you know, so this combination, this sort of one, two punch between, you know, Stoney and Downton, you know, and Ellis and their scouting ability, right. And their ability to sort of go out there and, and sell a team and say like, Hey, come, come on board. Right. So that yeah. stood out for me. A lot. Obviously, I think the big headline was was somebody like an Alex Morgan, right, coming into the fold, right, the California native herself coming into the fold for San Diego. But join the whole concept of like joining a third expansion side, technically, right. So I guess maybe there's an argument there for for the Thorns and that they were in an you know since the beginning in 2013, but they were still an inaugural team yeah. in an inaugural league, right? So that's being a part of the Thorns in 2013, the Pride in 2015, and now in 2021 in Alex Morgan. So I think there's a ton here when we're rattling off uh, these moves that I, that I just sort of rattled off that you can maybe, maybe make a case for almost each one, but I, I'm, I'm with you on the defensive signing of things, right? It signals a little bit of what Sony was talking to us about, but uh, I, I like how they sort of uh, brought in and how they targeted certain players uh, to sort of come in into the fold. But 
because we are like looking at an expansion team, right? We're sort of highlighting the roster overall in a sense, right? When it comes to signings or breakout signings. And it's sort of, we had a little bit of a chuckle about it because we were like, well, what are we going to talk about a little bit when we get into most instrumental or biggest losses, right? And we're going to crack a joke here, but I I'm going to say allocation money, maybe, <laughs> right? Maybe not a player per se, although there was some player movement for uh, San Diego, but there was a lot of uh, allocation money for this uh, franchise coming and going, right? 275000 for Alex Morgan to the Orlando Pride. You know, going through the expansion draft and selecting Chrissy Mewis, but then ultimately mm -hmm. trading her to Gotham FC, receiving 200000 in allocation money, and then acquiring Taylor Korniak Korni Korni and Emily Van Eggen from the Pride for what? More allocation money, yes. right? So I was just like, well, you know, maybe the uh, something like a loss, quote unquote, could be the allocation money. We definitely saw that come into play for this franchise side. I think it's really smart. And that's, that's what I meant earlier when I said that you can see Casey Stoney and Jill Ellis's influence on this team already, because not only the, the international players that they've acquired, but how smart they are at doing this. I mean, Casey, Casey Stoney was formerly with Manchester United. Um, she started with them in 2018, which was their inaugural season. And Stoney in that very first season won the FA women's championship, uh, that, that title, she was then promoted to the FA WSL. She, she won 18 out of her 20, games so she knows how to come in with a new team and with a new squad and kind of establish foundation and establish themselves in a league and I think that uh, maybe the balls I don't know how to say this of Casey Stoney to kind of say okay I'm going to draft Christy Mewis and then trade her to Gotham she's already looking like a veteran coach in this league which she is not um, she's already playing the game that all of these other coaches are playing and to kind of be in on that pop mix as well with the Abby Dahlkamper trade remember Abby Dahlkamper in the middle of the 2021 season went to Houston for just a few months to then be traded back to North Carolina oh. uh, her name right only ultimately to be traded to San Diego. So th that's really smart of Casey Stoney. It's it's we're seeing a lot of what she can do on paper and, and in her office um, that will hopefully translate to the pitch. Right. I mean, we're hoping. But yeah, I guess the biggest loss that they have is maybe their allocation money. Uh, maybe Casey Stoney, Stoney showing too much of her hand, saying that she's going to be such a defensive team, acquiring all these defensive players, making yeah. all these big offseason moves and, and really showing her hand as to how powerful she is and knowing what she wants for the 2022 season and just going out and getting it. I think it's really promising. If you're a San Diego yeah, fan, this is pretty cool. Well, we're talking about it in the kind of a, a little bit of a, a jokester kind of way, like in terms of like the biggest loss in the, their off season, right? But it's almost, you can sort of flip it and be like, that's really smart. I mean, it sort of signals that this is, a, a, this is going to be a franchise that's uh, yeah. not going to shy away from this uh, concept of allocation money in the league, right? Where you can sort of borrow so much uh, from the league to utilize. And in their first off season, just sort of going for it you know sort mm -hmm. of having the coach with that mindset to say like let's be aggressive with it uh you know a club president and gms agreeing with that you know and obviously having uh you know uh, the group in play ownership group in place where they're just like yeah like go ahead and do that uh, to sort of build up this club let's now that we talked about you know acquisitions losses right I had a couple of jokes about that let's uh let's maybe let's maybe look at the total roster uh sort of give some love to everybody that is officially a part of this preseason roster at the time and take a look at who's gonna you know potentially make a splash right you know in uh, in uh, preseason here in front of a uh, coaching staff let's start with the goalkeepers kaylin sheridan carly telford melissa loader emery when when wenjinger or wenninger wenninger I, I believe okay well we'll Someone let us know. All right. uh, I would love to to get that correct. Uh, that's four goalkeepers for San Diego. Defenders, they've got 10 listed. Abby Dahlkemper, Naomi Germa, Kaylee Real, Kristen McNabb, Kristen Westfall, Tegan McGrady, Maya Gao, Kyla Brewster, Megan Breed, and Taylor Hansen. Midfielders, also with 10. Taylor Cornier, Kelsey Turnbow, Emily Van Eggman, Marlene Shimmer, Sydney Pulver, Belle Breed, Mel Melania Shim, Sydney Zandi, Taylor Porter, and forwards, also rounding out with 10, with Alex Morgan, Jody Taylor, Sophia Jacobson, Amir Ali, Katie Johnson, Mackenzie Doniak, Rue Machera, Sarah Sodoma, and Emerson Lane. So you're talking 10 forwards, 10 midfielders, 10 defenders, 
four goalkeepers, 34 players. We have a lot of love for was- the, the preseason roster that has plus 30 on them, right? That was some easy math for us. I was doing that too. We, we have them listed out on our rundown as like goalkeepers, four, defenders, yep. 10. So it was easy math to go 10, 10, 10, four. Um, this is one of the bigger rosters that we've seen with 34 players. I think having 10 defenders is a lot of defenders for this squad to have, uh, especially considering all of the defenders listed are 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 backs not a lot of them play that six defensive midfield position. A lot of them are center backs or outside backs strictly. Uh, so interesting to kind of see how that will unfold, but this is a big roster, but I, as an expansion side in San Diego, I think they needed to have a big roster because you don't really know what you're going to get. You don't really know. I think yeah. when, when this roster dropped for the preseason for 2022, um, I, echoes around the Twitter sphere about mana Shim being on this roster. I think that was a huge, the biggest star that people saw. I mean, a lot of the other signings were already named before and and announced and celebrated from San Diego wave before it was a lot of the, the non roster invites that, um, on this list that were the most shocking and, and Manish him being one of them. I think also some of having some of the younger players uh, that were called in like Melissa louder. She's a, a goalkeeper formerly with a, f- a few different squads. She was with Kansas city. I think for a little uh, she bounced around. Um, she maybe saw one cap last year, but her to be a non-roster invite to the San Diego team. I think that's pretty interesting, uh, but Manish him. Yeah, I mean, she retired in 2019. She went to law school. Uh, good friends with Alex Morgan living in San Diego. Hey, why not? Why not give it a shot, right? I like that it's through. It's a. It's, she's listed as a non-roster invitee. So a lot of times when uh, players are sort of listed out along that player preseason roster uh, as a non-roster invitee, it's it's about getting in the mix and kind mm-hmm. of showing what you got and showing to the coaching staff that you can be an asset to this club. It really is about sort of kind of getting into the mix and kind of earning a contract, so to speak. Right. But obviously that, that sort of sent out, you know, uh, fun alarms, I'll call them, you know, across uh, social media, right. Just sort of coming off of the 2021 that we all uh, witnessed collectively together, you know, learning about through important reporting via the athletic about players, past experiences, right. With, uh, in, in toxic environments, poor playing environments, uh, at times, uh, suffering, uh, moments of, of, of harassment and Manashim, uh, was amongst several players who had come forward with sharing their stories uh, throughout 2021. And to sort of see her right on a preseason roster mm-hmm. almost sort of feels like as you as you read these articles, as you read these stories, it almost sort of feels like this kind of full story arc in, in, a, in a sense. So to see her on there, a lot of people noticed that uh, immediately. Uh, and, but when it comes to, what, 34 but, players? We're but she's about, not Lisa? the only non-roster invitee there's 10 of them yeah i was just gonna say i was like when we're looking at 34 players there's a ton right there's always a a little bit of an acronym right that comes in the acronyms that come into play a little key when you're looking at these uh these rosters that drop during the preseason so they they say things like you know cdp for like college draft pick or nri for like non-roster invitee or like uh uh you know this whole like uh not yet reported reported to camps you know like things like that so there's all these little different things but for that's something else so while we're looking at like 10 forwards 10 midfielders 10 defenders there's also throughout some of this there's actual 10 non-roster invitee yeah uh, as part of this uh this preseason um, you know, roster. So when we're looking at all of these players, when we uh, sort of maybe take a look at what could be an ideal starting 11 for San Diego Wave FC, we've been doing this a lot for all of our previews, taking a look at them. Um, it's tough in this part mm-hmm. of this season, in this phase of the year, to look at something and say, boom, this is going to be the starting 11 for this team. It's especially harder, I think, to do that with an expansion side, right? Because we're we only have bits and pieces, things, you know, um, conversations and, and interviews, right? Like you mentioned, the one that we had with Casey Stoney that sort of allude to the type of soccer and the type of team that they want to be in 2022. We haven't seen it yet, so it's yeah. tough to go through these and say like, this is going to be the starting eleven come day one. So, but let's maybe take a look at a few. Like when you're looking at some of these names, Lisa, are there any that jump out where you're just like, this is going to be a player that's going to be on that starting 11? 
I, I think a player like Abby Dahlkamper, defender, who was the very first signing, you don't go after a player like that and make a big deal if you're not going to play them. And I think that Abby yeah. Dahlkamper is a center back defender that you could build a back line around because Dahlkamper has a lot of those individual skills where she can break lines with her passing and she's a good 1v1 defender. I also think Alex Morgan, you don't go for a big name like that and not play even Sophia Jakobsen, a big Swedish international from Bayern. You don't go for big names if they're not necessarily going to see a lot of time on the field. Um, uh, looking at this roster breakdown, I also think it's interesting that Taylor Korniak, who traded from Orlando Pride to San Diego, was listed as a midfielder because she was a midfielder in college and then went to Orlando Pride and played under Mark Skinner and became a forward. He transitioned her higher up the field, and now she's backlisted as a midfielder. So just something else interesting to kind of keep your eye on yeah. which we could see her floating around i mean you're not stuck to that position if it's on the roster uh so you could float around but e even like a kaylin sheridan in goal i think she could get time and she could start there but otherwise i think a lot is left to be determined from my perspective it also depends how casey stoney wants to set up her formation are we looking yeah. at four backs and four in the midfield or three in the midfield three up top um a, a lot of different things to be seen still in the very first game and and we might not even see consistency in playing formations and playing personnel until the regular season until a few weeks into the regular season um me looking at these this 34 player roster for you sandra any specific names jump out or, or the ones I say, do you agree with in Doll Camper, Sheridan? Yeah, I think you, I think you nailed it for sure. I think you can go through each like yeah. each of the positions and and pick out at least one that we know for sure is going to be there. So for a lock for four of these, you know, different positions, Sheridan, I absolutely see uh, start getting the start in goal. Uh, I mean, the Canadian international coming off of a, a gold medal in the Tokyo Games, but not only that, at this point in her career very experienced NWSL keeper. So I don't think you, again, like you were sort of alluding to Alex Morgan, I don't think you make that kind of move for a doll camper or a Morgan, or in this case, a Sheridan, and not intend to start her uh, in, in net. I would love to see the rookie and Naomi Girma really kind of start to make a name for herself, talking about making a splash, mm -hmm. right? I would like to see that. You know, she was the first, uh, you know, uh, draft pick for this this team, number one overall maybe we can make that argument as well. Maybe we're like, well, maybe you don't make this pick at number one, number one overall, and not make a little bit of a commitment to this type yeah. of player, right? So I'm very curious to see. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of players and across different lines. Um, we're under the, you know, the assumption is in years past that, preseason rosters have to be narrowed down uh you know as as it continues to go on as we sort of look ahead to a challenge cup that is really getting closer uh and we'll see who they decide to sort of roll with you know and continue going on with um but i would like to see any number of those players on the starting 11 when it comes to maybe breaking things down and in terms of strong individual performances right when we're looking at this roster this these 34 players and in terms of young prospects this is a team that walked away on their draft day with a number of picks, right? Several, I think five or six or even seven, mm -hmm. um, where we can maybe highlight a player here. But I don't know if I'm going to go with that draft pick, right? Right away. I think it's it's easy to say, like, yes, Naomi Gearman. We've talked a lot about this player. We've interviewed her, right, alongside others uh, involved in the San Diego Wave franchise. But I'm going to be going with Amira Ali. This is a player that this club acquired in a trade with Portland Thorns alongside Kristen Westfall, right, in this sort of kind of expansion draft agreement kind of trade, like there was going to be a move that was going to be made and San Diego wasn't going to choose, you know, certain starters or forwards and there was a lot of like little, uh, you know, stipulations in place and then we learned that it was, you know, for Kristen Westfall and the rights, the player rights to Amira Ali and this is a player coming off of an impressive uh, collegiate season herself, spent time with Rutgers University. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a forward who still has a very high ceiling, right? Uh, had was a part of a big run with Rutgers University during that 2021 Challenge Cup run that they made 12 goals, six to six uh, over their 20 over 25 games, uh, you know, with Rutgers. So I think there's a lot of forwards with a lot of big names, right? on that line and there's uh, a lot of forwards uh, for san diego that have 
a lot of NW, NWSL yeah. experience, which you also want as well when you're developing a new expansion for SI, whether it's somebody like a Katie Johnson or a Mackenzie Doniak, right? But in terms of having this sort of young, nothing to lose, kind of everything to prove forward, I'm absolutely going to keep an eye on uh, Amir Ali for young prospect. Uh, I- are you looking at, at anyone else? Uh, I mean, I think you have to look at Amir Ali. It's a great look, especially because it'll be her first time getting minutes in the NWSL. Um, and I know you you gave some slack earlier about picking the number one draft pick or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to go with Naomi Gurma because she was the number one draft pick. And, it's awesome. <laughs> and, she, and she's a defender. Um, but I, I think you have to because she was the number one draft pick. She's going to have a little bit of pressure on her to perform and to be one of the best. I mean, uh, I think if... I put myself in her shoes. If you are the number one draft pick and you're a forward that scores a lot of goals, you might have a lot of pressure to be the rookie of the year. As a player like Naomi Gurma, I think she almost has less pressure on her because she was the number one draft pick and she went to an expansion side with Casey Stoney in San Diego, um, played at Stanford from Southern California, like has a lot of ties there. I think it's a really, really good fit. Uh, to help her prosper personally, right? And on the pitch. I mean, there's a lot going in in her way, but she also doesn't have that much pressure on her to perform on the pitch because as a defender, despite going number one, um, yes, I hope she starts. And I think we will see starts and minutes from her, but it's not necessarily expected. Whereas uh, maybe a forward that goes drafted number one and, and goes to a team, you're, you want to see them start. You want to see them score goals. You want to see them do all these things. So I'm really excited for Naomi Gurma because it, she's a player that I think has a lot of want and will to learn and do better. And putting her in front of players like Kaylin Sheridan, who is extremely vocal in goal, will help Gurma grow. Putting her alongside a player like Abby Dahlkamper in the back line will help Naomi Gurma grow. And, and uh, alongside Kristen Westfall in the back line, Tegan McGrady, a player that just won a national championship. If Naomi Gurma can tap into all of these players and learn a little bit from them and just play soccer every single day, look to make a difference on the field and look to learn every single day. Naomi Gurma is a player that we could see towards the end of the 2022 season being like, yeah, that's a lockdown defender for San Diego. So I am going to keep an eye on her no, and, okay. and we'll see what happens. We'll see how the one V ones go in, in training for San Diego between Ali and Gurma. See, you know, who does better <laughs> defense defense always wins. Woo-hoo. We love we love talking about defense here on, on attack and third, and that's not going to stop with the young prospects. In terms of experienced players, who's going to be that essential experienced player for this team? Right, this is an expansion side. They're building something new for the first time. They've got a ton of players, right, that they're looking at across the rosters, across all the different lines positionally. I'm going to stick with an international player here, though. I'm going to be going with Sophia Jakobsen in this one because I think it's very easy to maybe point at someone like an Alex Morgan, right, who's, who's like we talked about, being a part of now three different mm-hmm. clubs in in the NWSL, part of sort of launching these expansion sides as they get their uh, first seasons started in this league. But I think somebody like Sophia Jacobson is going to bring a little bit of a different type of experience to this franchise as they look to sort of take their first steps in NWSL. Like we said, she's a Swedish international. She joined, uh, she's going to be joining San Diego Wave FC via uh, Bayern Munich. And you sort of see a little bit, we had an interview with her, uh, Lisa, where she talked a little bit about that. And I hope uh, folks either listen to that or they can go back and, and find it. But, you know, she was only with Bayern Munich for, for six months before deciding, you know what, I am going to make the leap to this expansion side uh, in in, in NWSL. She's a 31-year-old player. She's got a lot of experience both in the international stage and throughout various club levels. And that's why I think she's going to be a player that they sort of uh, lean on a little bit in terms of her experience because it's a different type of experience. Yeah, that's I think that's the biggest point you have to make is that it's not NWSL experience, which – um, there might be a bit of a learning curve for Jacobson. However, I don't think so. I think because she does have all of this worldly experience and she's played against NWSL players, NWSL teams, uh, the United States women's national team, because she's a Swedish international.
international. She has all this experience. I think it will benefit benefit her um, that she can use it all to kind of harness a different type of game for herself in the NWSL. I, I agree. A huge player to watch for sure. I think I think that also sort of segues a little bit into our international spotlight, right? Highlighting big international players for clubs during these previews. Uh, will their impact be felt? A and B, will it be a loss if they uh, head off to World Cup qualifiers? And I think Sofia Jacobson is another player that we can sort of keep in this. But, you know, this is a expansion side that has a number of international players who are likely going to be missed should they find themselves participating in World Cup qualifiers throughout different moments of the 2022 season you have a number of united states women's national team players right whether it's somebody like an alex morgan or an abby doll kemper uh and then obviously on uh the canadian international side of things and somebody in kaylin sheridan so a number of international spotlights here for san diego wave fc as they start to really take the first steps into becoming what is an NWSL side in this wow. league. We got to look, we're not trying to recycle here, but there are two expansion sides coming into the fold. Yeah. In 2022. So we are asking a similar question of San Diego wave FC as an expansion side. Our biggest burning question for them entering the 2022 season, can they break the expansion team curse? There has never been an expansion side that has entered the fold of the NWSL and then gone on in their first season to crack a playoff appearance or even gone on to win a title throughout the season. Can San Diego break that curse? When we had their projected finish in 2022, for our way too early power rankings back in December 2021. We placed them a little bit low, Lisa. So yeah. I'm going to ask you, how do you have them finishing in 2022? So at the end of the 2021 season, we placed them number 10 in these standings, which is actually pretty good because it's not a bottom two spot for an expansion side and two expansion sides. That would be 11 or 12. Um, when I look at this team and this roster and everything that they've established so far and how their preseason has gone up until this point, I think they're looking pretty good. I mean, they have a lot of good players. They have a lot of good talent that they're they're bringing together. I think they have a good idea of what they want to do and what kind of team they want to be in 2022. Frankly, yes, I think that they will break that mold of being expansion side and not be stuck at the bottom of the table. I think that this is a San Diego team that could really surprise clubs in the 2022 season. Um, I'm putting them higher. I'm going to go out and say it. I have a lot of my eggs in the San Diego basket. I do. <laughs> it's it's. It's something that I just, I want to see them succeed for some reason. I have no ties to San Diego. I've been there like once or twice for soccer tournaments, but that's about it. No ties there. I just think that I really like their colors and I like their crest that they have going. I like the wave. I like the sound yeah. of that. And I really like Casey Stoney. I, I do. And I like the roster that she's established and the culture that she's establishing there um, as, as kind of, this secondary California team, I'm going to say, because Angel City is being this LA powerhouse and they yeah. have all these investors and San Diego is also a California expansion side, but they're yeah. kind of taking like the back. Have a little bit of that chip, you think? I think they have a little okay. bit of that chip. So I'm going to put them higher. I'm going to put them pretty high, like five, six, seven, like right Give on the range. level of, of playoff contention. That's where I'm putting them. Sandra, what about you? Are, are they going to break this mold of being an expansion side? I don't think that's unfair to, to have. I think having enthusiasm around an expansion side like this is is normal. I think a lot of people have a lot of enthusiasm about it. I, I like the moves that they made. Uh, I, I really love that this was a team that really kind of burst through the seams and and mm -hmm. really kind of made allocation money work for them. You know, I, I, I want to see more of that from from clubs. I love their number one overall pick in Naomi Girma. I love that they went defensive versus, you know, maybe oh. more attacking type of a player. There's there's a number of things that I can look through in their offseason that I am a, a, a fan of, right? Sort of watching this, this, this sport and following this league and covering this league. Uh, but that being said, I am in, a little bit in disagreement. I think it's going to be a struggle. I think with the introduction of two 
new clubs going from a 10 team league to a 12 team league. We're starting to mm -hmm. see what I think we were waiting to see for quite some time that there has been a little bit of a leveling out, right. Of some of the competition in terms of the talent pool in this league. And I think that's only going to make the league more competitive. So in that sense, it might be more of a struggle to try to break through into a playoff position, even with the expanded playoff format. I'm in agreement about Casey Stoney. I think if a coach can do it, I think it can be her. We saw what she did in okay. with Manchester United, right, with women overseas and in and, and, uh, and women's Super League, taking a franchise, making them fully professionalized, getting player buy-in, right, and getting performances and getting results out on the pitch. But it is very, very tough uh, to do that in NWSL and sort of maybe compete with some of these other things. So I'm going to be in disagreement. I think we're going to go one, two, right? So Sandra, I think this is the first one that we've kind of dis not disagreed, but we've had differing opinions on and, and we've I'm, picked different standings. I like this. Listen, I'm with it. I think you're looking more uh, middle, upper half of the yeah. table. I'm looking maybe lower, mid, lower half of the table for this team. And honestly, it's not a bad start. It ain't last place, right? So no, we'll see what happens. We say it all the time. We love to come back here and be proven wrong. I think with a little bit of differing of opinion, we can come back and and maybe have some, you know, some celebrations and who's correct or incorrect, whatever. Uh, but that's what I'm looking for in 2022. I know that no matter what, I'm just going to have a good time covering it. Uh, and I'm uh, and I'm here for it. I'm here to see San Diego AFC make a splash in 2022. Count them up. We'll see how many puns I dropped in this one. You got to crack the dad jokes when you can. I want to thank everybody for listening to our San Diego Wave FC 2022 preview. We've got full team by team previews for all 12 clubs and NWSL coming up. So stay tuned. You can drop us your own thoughts about San Diego on Twitter at attacking third or in the comments. If you subscribe at YouTube, visit youtube.com slash attacking third. But don't go anywhere. We have an exclusive interview with Wave FC forward Kelsey Turnbull right after this quick break.